Welcome back to Granite Reacts, where I'm doing a bit of an oldie today. I know my wife's a bit uh, obsessed by this series, Stranger Things. I've seen a couple of episodes, it's really... I don't watch a lot of television, so... Uh, before I go on, if you like what we're doing on this channel, please click like. If you don't like what we're doing on this channel, why not click like? Please subscribe, and down in the description you'll find links to our social media, including our Facebook which is getting, starting to get a little bit of track, a bit of traction now. Uh, we have people like Irene Janssen, uh, Mike, Mike Mills, uh, Robert Sutterberg. There's a, there's a few celebs down there. So please come over, send a friend request, and I'll accept you. Please behave yourself, but you can then be able to contact and uh, watch the content that the uh, other creators like that are putting up. So music uh, in the in the realm of music uh, running up that hill i mean it's it's a timeless masterpiece piece because of it's well i think it hit number one again didn't it didn't it make kate bush the elder, oldest eldest uh number one singer of all time but uh running up the hill she wrote with well no she wrote it but she was discovered by david gilmore now and the song that delves into themes of uh, love, empathy, and uh, human relations, it's uh, it's it's standing as a timeless classic. And uh, to me, it's a beautiful song. Uh, it's, it contemplates it contemplates the obstacles we encounter in a pursuit of comprehension and correction. Uh, deep emotions. Empathy and the beauty of striving to unite hearts. Her voice, her compelling, compelling nar narrative of Kate Bush in Run Up the Hill. It's a poignant reflection uh, towards empathy and understanding our collective journey. I hope I've managed to describe that well. But I could have gone with any different version of this. Uh, let me just look at this. But I've decided... That I'm going with uh, the live version because she, she rarely performed live; uh, it was just records. And uh, I can't remember when. Uh, that 1978 would that be the when this was first uh, released, and now and then in the 1980s, she actually appeared with uh, David Gilmour on stage to sing this song, so. Let's have a listen, shall we? I'm getting a bit crowded here. I'm using the wrong mouse. I'm using one that's not connected to anything. Here we go. It's funny uh, seeing uh, David Gilmore with his hair. And uh, I think that's a headless Steinberger guitar. I'd have to check up on that. But again, I mean, I've been a biker all my life. I only packed up riding uh, a couple of years back after I had the operations on my hands. Uh, my last bike was a soft tail, Harley Davidson. But uh, I used to work in a hotel. And on a Friday night, and sometimes on a Saturday night, we'd all go out to the club. So I had, did have clothes to suit this area, era. I didn't always be wearing leather jackets and jeans. But seeing those fashions now, I'm just glad there's not any photographs that I know of that exist from that time. <laughs>
where it's like to hear live music where uh, we, I mean there's you <laughs> I don't know what I'm trying to say now uh, she reproduced the, the song the record live on stage with a talent I think Stuart Elliott was on the drums I can't remember the rest apart from obviously Gilmore but that was a beautiful rendition of that song and I'm glad the young people are listening to it it's uh, maybe they'll uh, go back and search more of Kate Bushy's music and it'd be even better if they went back and search more from uh, David Gilmore and Pink Floyd because I do believe that uh, Kate Bush has sung a couple of Pink Floyd songs pissing songs with Gilmore but I'd have to check on that because I'm not I can't be 100% sure so what did you think of that I mean I thoroughly enjoyed that and it's uh It, it transcends time to resonate with uh, different audiences, thanks to um, uh, Stranger Things. I'm not going to bother too much about it, but it's an enduring. It's it it stands up to show what the enduring power of music and how that something that was written in the fifties, the sixties, the seventies, and so on can still be enjoyed by the young people today but more importantly and certainly this is my case born in the uh, 50s just uh, is that this the music from uh, up to the 80s is my era I suppose but the music of the 90s and the thousands and music up to now I'm listening to it I'm listening to bands new bands young bands uh, established bands old bands I'm listening to everything and it's actually finding, proving difficult to find things to react to. Uh, and I'm constantly searching for something new to play. Which is why I've just done a couple of things and I've got some more stuff coming very, very soon. But I did enjoy doing that song. So remember, like, subscribe, uh, do what you like. Please, go buy me a coffee. I need some more kit. I need a new camera. This is not brilliant and I need some better lighting. And any money I earn from that will be spent on the channel. In fact, it's more likely for every pound I earn or every euro or whatever I earn on uh, Buy Me A Coffee. I'm spending 10 of my own anyway. So uh, please come join us over on Facebook. Speak to you soon. Bye.